tuombe Mungu baba mwenyewe Muumba muhifadhi kwa vitu vyote viliomo mbinguni na hapa duniani Wewe ndiye mliki wetu na sisi watu wako taja pamoja tukikuabudu na kukushukuru na kukusifu jina lako takatifu kwa wema ambayo umeendelea kutenda miongoni mwetu na maishani mwetu Baba wa mbinguni wakati huu ambapo tunapata tunajitayarisha kusikia neno lako tunahitaji uwepo wa roho wako mtakatifu apate kutuongoza na kutulisha neno lako mimi nitumie tu kama chombo chako kuweza kunenea watu wako yale ambayo umeweka kinywani changu watu wako wapate kubarikiwa na kuinuliwa haya tunaomba kwa Yesu Kristo Bwana wetu amen tuweze kuketi Bwana Yesu asifiwe Mungu ni mwema na kila wakati um, Your Excellency the Deputy President of the Republic of Kenya all the guests who have arrived here to this function alongside him the bishops clergy wa Kristo wa Embu Diocese Bwana asifiwe tena It's a great honor and a privilege to be joining the faithful Christians of this diocese as you gather to mark 34 years since you were a diocese and so it is in order to start by saying congratulations for the faithful service to God and humanity over all these years and for upholding the light of faith today and into the future i have come from marsabet together with my wife mama askofu wako arawasalimia and the chaplain from marsabet reverend james bwana wabariki na waletea salamu kutoka uaskofu wa marsabet muzipokee Mwezipokea. Ah, uh, Marsabet Diocese was part of what was the larger Mount Kenya East Diocese before the gospel expanded and many souls came to the Lord necessitating the need for division some subdivisions and creations of new dioceses. But we are still part of each other through the program Anglican Development Services and we are connected and linked together in faith but also in the ministry. We thank God for the pioneer evangelists and the pastors who have taken the gospel to the farthest interior the front line of the mission field of this country. And because of those faithful ministers of the gospel exists a diocese among the predominantly nomadic people groups in what seems to be a difficult uh, mission field but we thank god the church continues to thrive people continue to come to faith and embrace jesus christ as lord because Mungu anapoguza mioyo ya watu na kuyabadilisha mtu hana sababu ya kukataa injili ya wokovu na ya ukombozi I know when you see most of us coming from northern Kenya mnaona kama ni ngumu sana and sometimes you are surprised that there could be actually a pastor or even a bishop ambaye anatoka kutoka kwa jamii ya wakushaiti but if you have not known that no today that we are embracing Jesus as lord and savior in numbers the young and the old 
and we stand boldly and firmly and confess and proclaim the saving power of the Lord Jesus Christ. So pray for us and continue joining us in ministry and in mission. Brothers and sisters, we have come to celebrate 34 years of ministry as a diocese. And we are joining you with great gratitude in our hearts and a deep sense of honor for all those who have been part of this great ministry and great mission. The psalmist in Psalms 103 verse 2 says, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, for the great things that the Lord has done. It cannot be hidden. Inajisemea kwamba mungu wa metenda mema na makubu wa miongoni mwetu na katika maisha yetu. And in the book of Psalms 126, the psalmist recalls the great work that God has done when the exiles were returned from Babylon, from the captivity. Na wakaregeshwa kwa nyumbani inje na matarajio yao. Hawakudhani na wakufikiria ya kwamba siku moja wanaweza kurudi makwao na kusherekea na kusifu mungu na kuishi maisha yao ya ukristo ama ya, 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 ya kumjua mungu na kumuomba katika hekalu kule Yerusalemu. And the text says, when the Lord changed Zion's circumstances for the better, it was like we had been dreaming. Our mouths were suddenly filled with laughter. Our tongues were filled with joyful shouts. It was even said at the time among the nations, the Lord has done great things for them. Yes, the Lord has done great things for us and we are overjoyed. Is it not true that as faithful Christians of this diocese, and your friends and partners and your leaders are gathered here because the same Lord who has done great things in the years gone, during those biblical times, has also done the same great things in our midst. We don't have to be taken to exiles and to be brought back for us physically that we may say we are now delivered, that we are now free. But we know there's being enslaved by sin and into sinful lifestyle and to live in a life of condemnation until we encounter the saving power of Jesus Christ. As individual Christians and as a church, as a diocese, is it not true that we are celebrating God's faithfulness, the redeeming power of Jesus Christ at work in our hearts, in our lives, in our homes, and in our nation? Because to be enslaved is not just about the first captivity of the physical body, but there's also the spiritual captivity. Kuna kutekwa nyara kiroho. Ya kwamba, ijapokuwa tunaishi katika inchi yenye uhuru, mwanadamu wanaweza kukosa uhuru wake kwa kupeana maisha yake kwa shetani. Na kuishi maisha ambayo haya ambatani na mapenzi ya mungu na neno la mungu. The Lord has done great things by saving us from the captivity into sin and sinful natures from living in the dominion of Satan and darkness, but in his grace bringing us to light and life in Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior. Is it not a great day of celebration? Because faithful men and women pioneered mission work 
in the corridors of our homes and our dioceses. Is it not worth celebrating that the Lord has done great things in our midst when we see churches here and there all over, when we see young and old embracing the Lordship of Jesus Christ, when we see medical facilities in our midst, schools coming up, fighting ignorance and diseases, but proclaiming the good news of the, of the, of the Lord Jesus Christ that has saved us. Anniversaries are great moments of looking back and reimagining where the Lord has taken us from, the road that we have traveled, the faithful men and women that we have encountered along the way, but also what the Lord has enabled us to accomplish in our lifetime and in our midst. And when we look back, we connect with our Creator. We connect with our Savior. And we connect with his good work and his enabling grace. But we also connect with the faithful men and women who have lived faithfully for the gospel. Brothers and sisters, it is a time of jubilation. It is a season of praising God because he has done great things in our midst. In the book of Joshua, chapter 23, and even chapter 24, Joshua was reminding the children of Israelites of how the Lord has redeemed and delivered a nation and how the Lord has provided for them and how he has given them new land and new territories and the stories of how the Lord delivered them but also fed them. It brings to their memories the faithfulness, the goodness of the Lord. Wana kumbushwa, kumbushwa, wema wabwana. Na Yeshua na wakumbusha ya kwamba, mungu indie aliwapigania. Mungu indie aliwawezesha. Ijapokuwa mulikuwa mkisafiri na kukutana na, na watu wa mataifa mengine, ambao kwa idadi ni wengi kuliko nyinyi, lakini mungu akawashindania, akawapigania na akawasimamisha. Recalling the journey of yester years. Recalling the paths that they have trekked and come. But then celebrating his faithfulness and the power of God at work in our lives and in their lives. My brothers and my sisters, Joshua chapter 23 begins by saying, and when finally the children of Israel are now rested from the war, from their enemies and they have grown and they have prospered baada ya utulivu kupatikana baada ya wao kunawiri katika maisha na sasa Yoshua mwenyewe amekuwa mzee na umri umeenda na sasa anakaribia kuondoka lakini anawakumbusha historia na wema wa Bwana is it not true that we all long for seasons of relief from the pressures of this world? The struggles and the pains that sin causes us, but also sometimes our own colleagues, our own brothers and sisters, our own countrymen can cause us the heartaches and the pains. Is it not true that we long for a moment of deliverance and a moment of Breathing a sigh of relief. It's finally peaceful. It's finally uh, glorious. One of joy and wholeness can only come to us from God our Savior. For man comes brokenness. But in Christ, the broken pieces of our lives are pulled together and made whole again. Mm -hmm. 
the Lord in his faithfulness is always willing and always in what kind of brokenness are you going through? What kind of heartbreaks and aches are you experiencing in your life now? The Lord says, if there's anyone who is heavy laden, come, I give you rest. It doesn't matter what a man does to you. It doesn't matter the, 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 the experiences of hardship and the struggles and the pains and the brokenness that we go through. When we reconnect back to God, our creator, in his son, Jesus Christ, the Lord breathes his uh, life-giving breath into our hearts, into our lives, and makes us whole again. When we look back and celebrate, we also celebrate the faithfulness of the men and women who have served the Lord faithfully and have impacted our lives. My brothers and my sisters, these dancers cannot be where it is today if it were not for those pioneers of the gospel in our soil, in our villages. When we mark this 34th anniversary, it's worth remembering them. It's worth celebrating them. It's worth thanking God for their lives and for their testimonies. Not just that, each and every one of us have got individual histories. Tuko na historia ya kipekee ambayo tunapitia. Tunapoangalia nyuma na kumshukuru Mungu, ni vizuri pia tuangalie wale Mungu ameweka katika barabara zetu. Ndio wakatukupa wakakuwa maybe what 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 other preachers are talking about destiny helpers. Wale Mungu ametuwekea katika barabara waweze kutuinua tufike eh, eh, malengo zetu ama mahali ambapo tumefika. Keep records of God's faithfulness, but also the goodness of faithful men and women whom the Lord has sent our ways. Bwana Yesu asifiwe. Bwana Yesu asifiwe. And so, tunasherekea wema wa Bwana pamoja na kila moja wetu. The theme of this anniversary, 34th anniversary, is holding fast to that which we have. Is it not God that we have? Is it not the word of God, the, the redeeming word of God that is at our disposal? Is it not faith in Jesus Christ above anything else? Everything else is secondary. But of most significance is the living faith in the living God. The living faith in the living God. Our newness that we are in Christ Jesus. Bwana Yesu asifiwe. Holding fast. You know, it's not just us to, who evaluate our stories and the road we have traveled. But the Lord God takes note of every step that we take. And the lives that we live. And this is very evident in the book of Revelation, katika kitabu cha ufunuo wa Yohana, mlango wa pili kuanzia mstari wa 18, Mungu akizungumzia kanisa ya 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 tira. Na Mungu katika um, mstari wa 19 Isa anasema, "Na yajua kazi yako." Na yafahamu upendo wako na, na, na uvumilivu wako. The Lord looks back, sees and watches all aspects of our lives in his faithfulness. And the Lord equally celebrates the faithfulness of his sons and daughters when they walk before him in obedience, when they serve in faithfulness, when they endure suffering and persecutions. But the Lord also sees our hearts 
and our minds. Ni Mungu ambaye macho yake yake inapenya katika mawazo yetu na mioyo zetu. Na Mungu utambua uaminifu wetu na utendaji kazi wetu. Na kila wakati na kila mara na kwa wakati wake anasema ya kwamba hongera mtumishi mwema. Well done faithful servant. My brothers and my sisters. How is the disposition of our hearts and the minds? What is the nature of our commitment to serving God and his people in this diocese or wherever he has positioned us as a society and as a nation? It is important that wherever God places places you it's not just man that you are serving it is God in heaven who created you it is God in heaven who positioned you there that you are serving and the lord requires us to serve him with the faithfulness with the diligence with obedience and the faithfulness and the great commitment it is not just enough to be somewhere in an office there's more to be being in an office in a church in a parish in a diocese god requires of us faithfulness god requires of us uh, delivery of services god requires of us growth expansion enlargement of our territories and the betterment of his people it is important we evaluate our hearts and our minds to see that we are in tune with the heart of god because it is only when our hearts are in tune with the heart of god then it pleases the lord who has called us and commissioned us to serve him bwana yesu asifiwe while this is true and the lord celebrates they are faithful church this heart the person gets distracted from living life that is worthy of the gospel from living life meaningfully as the lord would have desired it is it not true that when seeds of sin and evil indwells a family that family doesn't enjoy the wholeness that they deserve is it not true that when sin infiltrates christian institutions that institution is distracted from being faithful witnesses of the love of god is it not true that when we harbor sin and wrong wrong deeds in our hearts and in our minds we are distracted from pursuing our dreams and visions in life is it not true when wrongdoing is the order of the day in a nation then that nation is like it's committing suicide it self distracts itself anything that interferes with the peace of heart and the peace of mind anything that distracts a family an individual a church and a nation from pursuing its god given visions and dreams of wholeness destroys that institution and that individual the bible says when the russians are in authority the nation is blessed when the russians are in authority families are blessed 
When the Russians are in authority, churches are blessed. And when righteousness reigns, the entire world is blessed. But when somebody, institution, churches, homes, and nations fall in the hands of the wicked, then you can imagine the magnitude of the destruction and the peacelessness that is there. May it please each and every one of us to uphold godliness, to uphold love, to uphold peace, and to anchor our lives in the word of God so that we prosper and we become fruitful in all that we do. As we celebrate and thank God for the fact that he has brought this diocese, my brothers and my sisters, we cannot sit back and remain just in the mood of celebrating the past. We thank God for the faithful witnessing and ministry of the men and women who have gone ahead of us. But we have something to do in our time too. What else was if you will? We have something greater to do in our seasons too. So that the next generation can celebrate our faithfulness and our due diligence in serving the Lord. The Lord says in verse 19, I also know that the work that you have done most recently are even greater than those you did in the first place. Brothers and sisters, that moving forward, the Lord, the Lord calls us to fan into flame the fire of the gospel messages. Tuendeleke kuhubiri injili kwa njia ya kujitolea. Tuendeleke kujitolea kwa mali na, 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 na kila hali ili injili iweze kupenya kila roho, kila bo kila familia na kila moyo they say big dreams are valid embu diocese your forefathers have faithfully proclaimed the gospel you too have remained faithful. The Bible says, hold fast to that which you have. Don't just stay, but fan it into flame. Let it reach the near and far places, the love of God. Let us have God and do all that is within our reach. to proclaim the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. How do we hold firm? Or why should we shun? then Darkness will reign, and our generations will suffer, 
and they will be detached from God, their creator. And therefore, for the sake of passing on a legacy of faith, the men and women of faith who live today must hold fast to the hope of faith that they have. We must hold fast because there are people who must come to this faith to, have to find life. It is part of our Christian test witnessing that we not only tell the story or know the story, but we also live the story of the, of, of the living word of God. And how do we do this as I finish? How do we do this? How do we hold fast to the hope that we have, to the faith that we have? Brothers and sisters, it is in anchoring our life in the word of God. Amen? We know why it is important, but we also want to know how should we do it. If you are not rooted in the scripture, you cannot stand the test of time. Not just believing, but living it out in our day-to-day -day life. One else if you will. How do we hold fast? By committing ourselves in the Christian discipline of prayer. Because in praying, we connect with God, our Father. Because in praying, we, hear, we also listen to God speak to us. We need to be men and women of prayer. You know, I was traveling and we listened to a gospel song that was being powerfully done. And it was touching every heart. And somehow I turned to one of my brother and said, it's likely we have the theology, but this person has the faith. Do, do, do you get what I mean? I mean, sometimes things can be just head knowledge, but without the heart connecting with the God, the Father. And so the impact is not in what we know, but in how we are connected with the source of our faith. And so my brother and my sister dwell in the Christian discipline of prayer. Stay connected with faithful Christians, faithful believers around you. Because kunimoja haiwezi kapwaka peke yake. But as the, as the heads of the, of, the, of the firewood is connected together, the fire burns brighter. Usikae na imani yako kando peke yako. Connect with faithful men and women. Men who have deeper convictions about Jesus Christ and his word. And of course, connect, seek to connect with the will of God in the power of the Holy Spirit. Peke yetu atuna nguvu. But when we are connected with the Holy Spirit, who speaks to us the mind of the Father, who guides and convicts us, then we are most likely going to hold firm and fast to the faith. And lastly, how do you hold fast? fast? Be sensitive to your environment. Ensure that you safeguard your soul against the snares of the evil one. The Bible says, your adversary roams around like a roaring lion seeking whom to devour. Baki katika zizi la buwana. Akikisha ya kwamba, you are safe from the snares of the evil one every place, every moment of your life. When you do such, then you have held firm and fast to the faith. Bwana Yesu asifiwe. Na ya mwisho wa sasa, shikilieni imani yenu, shikilieni dawasasi yenu. Ili tuweze kuwa na nguvu ya kuweza kuhubiri njili zaidi. I've seen the visions being rolled out by the diocese. Greater visions and dreams into the future. My brothers and sisters, this can only be realized when men and women of faith are committed. When they are excited about it. When they guess what this is going to do for the wider mission of the church, I want to be part of it. I can say, this one, by faith, we did it. Amen.
It happened during our time. May the Lord give us the grace that we need. The grace to stand firm in our journey of faith. The grace to say yes and to walk in obedience with the will of God. So that we are not just living for ourselves, but we are living for the body of Christ. But we are also living for the generations to come. So that like us, they know the Lord. And when finally the trumpet is blown, we have a place in eternal rest. Because we have held firm and fast to the faith that has been delivered to us. In the name of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank God for that uh, message, <clears throat> and we appreciate uh, the servant of the Lord for sharing with us as we celebrate together. We are celebrating as we are looking forward to what we are supposed to do within our generation. Those who have been there before us, they have done their part. Now that uh, God has given us an opportunity to be and to serve him, we seek that all of us, we join our hands in serving him. Your Excellency, this vision we have is like we are lodging it here today. Today is the first day that we want to really raise funds looking at this project. It is our hope that we will be able to manage. The whole project is estimated to take or to cost us 350 million. 350 million. Wanafuzi nasikia vile mnasema inawezekana. Kwa sababu ya imani na kujitolea kwetu na kufanya kazi tukiwa kitu kimoja. So today, Your Excellency, it is the first day that we are going to do this as we look at what the architect has really done and I want to appreciate architect Tinyaga so much for a job well done. This man has done it not uh, expect, expecting to be paid free of charge 